Chapter 25 Jenny Jenny came to school on the back of her father's motorcycle. She was late. Wayside school began at 9 o'clock. It was almost 9.30. She kissed her father goodbye and raced up the 30 flights of stairs to Mrs. Jules' room. I'm sorry I'm late, Mrs. Jules, but my father's motorcycle lost a... Uh... There was nobody there. The room was empty. Hello? Hello? She cried. Mrs. Jules? Dana? Todd? Anyone? There was no one in the room. Maybe I'm early? Jenny thought. She looked up at the clock. It was exactly 9.30. Oh, I hope they didn't go on a field trip without me. She looked out the window. Nobody was there. Not even Lewis. Jenny didn't know what to do. She sat down at her desk. She watched the second hand go around on the clock. I might as well catch up on my spelling, she thought. She opened her desk and took out her speller. M-U-D spells mud. Where is everybody? B-L-O-O-D spells blood. I hope nothing has happened to them. B-L-A-C-K spells black. Jenny heard footsteps coming down the hall. She began to work very fast. H-A-C spells H-A-C-K spells hack. S-M-A-C-K spells smack. Someone opened the door. Jenny turned around. Ack! She gasped. He was a man Jenny had never seen before. He had a black mustache and a matching attache case. Jenny jumped out of her seat. Get back in your seat, the man said. Jenny slowly sat down. The man walked over and sat down in Dana's seat, facing Jenny. He opened his attache case and removed some papers. What is your name? He asked her. Jenny, whispered Jenny. Jenny, the man repeated as if he didn't believe her. Well, it is actually Jennifer. Jenny for short, said Jenny. I see, said the man. He took the speller from Jenny's desk. Jenny's name was written across the top. He put the speller in his attache case. What are you doing, Jennifer? He asked. This is my classroom, said Jenny. Are you sure? The man asked. Yes, I think so. I mean, where is the rest of your class? The man asked. I don't know, said Jenny. Maybe they went on a field trip. No, said the man. They didn't go on a field trip. Well, I don't know where they are, Jenny cried. I was half an hour late today, and when I got here, everybody was gone. Really? Did something happen to them? The man didn't answer her. He wrote something on a piece of paper. Tell me something, Jennifer. When you came to school today and saw that nobody was here, weren't you somewhat puzzled? Yeah, yes, yes said Jenny. What happened to them? If you were really so concerned and so puzzled, said the man, why did you work on spelling? I don't know, said Jenny. It would seem to me, the man said, that if a child came to school and nobody was there, she might play games or walk around or go home, but certainly not work on spelling. Jenny started to cry. I didn't know what to do. I was late and I had to ride on a motorcycle and nobody was here. And now you're asking me all kinds of questions and I'm afraid what has happened to Dana and Mrs. Jules and Rondi and Allison. The man didn't understand a word she said. Jenny heard more footsteps. The man got up and un opened the door. Two more men came in. One had a black mustache, like the first man. The other man was bald. Jenny was frightened by them. Does she know? asked the newcomer with a mustache. She claims she knows nothing, the first man answered. She says she was late today, and when she got here, everybody was gone. Do you believe her? asked the man with the bald head. 
I'm not sure. She was working on her speller when I walked in. He reached into his attache case and took out Jenny's speller. He handed it to the man with the bald head. The bald man read Jenny's name across the top of it. Tell me, Jenny, he said, why are you the only one here? I don't know, said Jenny. Has this ever happened before? He asked. No, never, said Jenny. He gave Jenny her speller. Put this inside your desk. Jenny put it away. I'm satisfied, said the man with the bald head. Okay, Jennifer, said the first man. You may go now. Jenny got out of her seat. Jenny, the bald man called. Jenny turned slowly around. Yes, she whispered. Next time, don't come to school on a Saturday. Chapter 26, Terrence. Terrence was a good athlete, but a bad sport. Rondi and Allison were playing two square with a red ball. Can I play? Asked Terrence. No, Allison replied. You have to let me play, Terrence said. Lewis says we have to share the balls. Well, we're not sharing with you, said Allison. Oh, let him play, said Rondi. All right, said Allison. We'll play three square. You better play right. I will, said Terrence. Allison bounced the ball to Rondi. Rondi bounced it over to Terrence. Terrence caught it and kicked it over the fence. You have to go get it, said Allison. Shut up, Dixie Cup, Terrence answered. Rondi ran and told Lewis. DJ and Damien were playing basketball. Uh-oh, here comes Terrence, said Damien. Hey, let me play, said Terrence. Get lost, Terrence, said Damien. You have to share the balls. Lewis says so, said Terrence. Okay, but just throw it in the basket. Don't kick it, said Damien. I won't, said Terrence. First, Damien took a shot. It bounced off the backboard and through the hoop. Next, DJ took a shot. He threw it underhand way up in the air and it came down through the hoop without touching the rim. Then Terrence took a shot. He kicked it over the fence. You idiot, said Damien. Take a train, peanut brain, Terrence answered. DJ went and told Lewis. Stephen, Calvin, Joe, John, and Leslie were playing spud. Stephen was it. Everyone else had a number. Stephen had to throw the ball up in the air and call out a number. The person who had that number had to try to catch it. Can I play? asked Terrence. No, said Calvin. You'll just kick the ball over the fence. No, said Joe. No way, said John. No, said Leslie. Sure, said Stephen. Newcomers are it. He gave the ball to Terrence. Just throw the ball up in the air and call out a number between one and five. Okay, said Terrence. The children formed a circle around Terrence. A million, yelled Terrence as he kicked the ball over the fence. What did you do that for, asked Stephen. Eat a frog, warthog, said Terrence. Stephen ran and told Lewis. Terrence looked around. There was nothing to do. There were no balls left. Lewis walked up to him. He was followed by Allison, Rondi, Damian, DJ, Stephen, Calvin, Joe, John, and Leslie. What's the matter, Terrence? asked Lewis. There are no balls, said Terrence. Do you have a green ball? No, said Lewis. All of my balls have mysteriously disappeared. Darn it, said Terrence. There's nothing left to kick. Nothing left to kick? asked Lewis. Oh, I don't know about that. What do you think, Rondi? Is there anything left to kick? Rondi thought a minute. Then she smiled. She was missing her two front teeth. Yes, there is something left to kick, she said. Well, where is it? asked Terrence. Let me check with Allison, said Lewis. Allison, is there anything left to kick? He winked at her. There sure is, said Allison. What? What? asked Terrence. How about you, Damien? asked Lewis. Can you think of anything? Damien nodded his head, yes. Well, what is it? asked Terrence. He couldn't wait. 
DJ, we got anything around here to kick? Asked Lewis. DJ smiled. Yes, we do, he said. Give it to me, give it to me, Terrence demanded. I don't know if I should, said Lewis. What do you think, Calvin? Should I give it to him? I think you should, said Calvin. You heard Calvin, said Terrence. Give it to me. Not so fast, said Lewis. Leslie, should I give it to him? Oh, yes, I think he deserves it, said Leslie. Give it to me, give it to me, Terrence repeated. Do you also think he deserves it, Joe? asked Lewis. Yes, I think so, said Joe. What about you, John? asked Lewis. Oh, definitely, give it to him, John answered. Come on, come on, said Terrence. Recess is almost over. We'll leave it up to Stephen, said Lewis. Whatever he says goes. Let him have it, said Stephen. You heard him, Lewis, said Terrence. Let me have it. Okay, said Lewis. He picked Terrence up and kicked him over the fence. Chapter 27, Joy. Joy had forgotten her lunch at home. It was lunchtime. She was hungry. She didn't have a meal ticket. If she had had a meal ticket, she could have had a lunch from Miss Mush, the lunch teacher. She'd have to be terribly hungry to eat a lunch made by Miss Mush. Even an empty brown bag sack would taste better. But now, that's how hungry Joy was. Damien hadn't forgotten his lunch. He had brought a lovely turkey sandwich, a big piece of chocolate cake, and a crisp red apple. All he needed was a glass of milk. He could get that from Miss Mush. Miss Mush didn't know how to ruin milk. Damien left his lunch on his desk and went to the end of the milk line. Joy didn't waste any time. She reached into Damien's sack and took out the apple. But then she spotted the turkey sandwich. She put back the apple, took the sandwich, and noticed the chocolate cake. She put back the sandwich and took the chocolate cake. But then Joy had second thoughts. She put back the cake. Then she grabbed Damien's whole lunch. First she ate the sandwich. It was in a baggie. When she finished the sandwich, she placed the baggie on Jason's desk. Next she ate the chocolate cake. It was wrapped in wax paper. She put the wax paper on Allison's desk. She ate the apple last, and she placed the apple core on Dee Dee's desk. Then she put the empty sack on Calvin's desk. Damien returned with his glass of milk. Mrs. Jules, he, my lunch is gone, he called. I wonder where it could be, said Mrs. Jules. Calvin took it, said Joy. There's the empty sack on his desk. Good work, Joy, said Mrs. Jules. Calvin, I'm ashamed of you. She wrote Calvin's name on the blackboard under the word discipline. Look, the baggie from Damien's turkey sandwich is on Jason's desk, Joy called. Very good, Joy, said Mrs. Jules. But how did you know that Damien had a turkey sandwich? Oh, I'm just very smart said Joy. Mrs. Jules wrote Jason's name on the blackboard under Calvin's. And there's the wax paper from that delicious chocolate cake on Allison's desk, Joy announced. Joy had chocolate all around her lips. Allison stood firm. She looked into Miss Jules' eyes. I didn't eat his cake, she said. The evidence is there on your desk, said Mrs. Jules. Joy spotted it. She wrote Allison's name under Jason's. Damien's apple core is on Dee Dee's desk, said Joy. Very good, Joy, said Mrs. Jules. She wrote Dee Dee's name under Allison's. Damien, I think you ought to thank Joy, said Mrs. Jules. She solved the mystery. Thank you, Joy, said Damien. Just then, Lewis, the yard teacher, walked in. I have your lunch, Joy, he said. Your mother brought it. You left it at home. You mean you didn't have a lunch? asked Mrs. Jules. You must be very hungry. No, said Joy. Not really. Since Damien didn't get to eat, he can have it. Thanks a lot, said Damien. You are, are the greatest. He ate Joy's lunch, an old bologna sandwich and a dried up carrot. 
Joy, for being such a good detective and for being so generous with your lunch, you may help yourself to a Tootsie Roll Pop, said Mrs. Jules. They are in the coffee can on top of my desk. Joy took one. Then, when Mrs. Jules wasn't looking, she took another. Calvin, Jason, Allison, and Dee Dee had their names on the blackboard under the word discipline, but they had a good rest of the day, so at two o'clock, Mrs. Jules erased them. They forgot all about the whole thing. Damien had a lousy lunch instead of a great lunch, but five minutes later, it didn't make a difference. He couldn't taste it anymore, and he was full. He went outside to play basketball and forgot about the whole thing. Joy had a great lunch and two Tootsie Roll Pops, but five minutes later it didn't make any difference. She couldn't taste it anymore, and she was full. And at dinner time, she was hungry just the same. But a horrible thing happened. Joy couldn't forget about stealing Damien's lunch. And for the rest of the year, every turkey sandwich, piece of chocolate cake, apple, and Tootsie Roll Pop tasted like Mrs. Mush's porridge.